Hello, in this video we're going to calculate the mean and variance of a hypergeometric distribution. Now I already have a video on my playlist titled that where we calculate the mean and variance of hypergeometric distribution. However, in this video we're going to use another approach. Now I put this playlist in a uh, video in a playlist mean variance moments mode of distributions. The hypergeometric distribution, now quick development, assume we have a finite number of objects capital N with R of them successes, there are N minus R objects that are failures. Now we draw a random sample size N objects without replacement. The observations are not independent because of this, but if we let X equal the number of successes in the sample of size N, then the density of X is a hypergeometric distribution given by this equation. And these are common combinations. R choose X, N minus R choose N minus X, and then capital N choose little n. And X goes from these two boundaries. You'd think it goes from 0 to N. The number of successes, our sample size is N. It could be 0 successes or N successes. But it really depends upon the total population size and how many successes and or how many failures, you know, the size of those compared to our sample size. And there are restrictions. And I'd encourage you to go through a few little examples yourself to make sure these are correct. Now, I want to introduce an, introduce an equivalent approach to what I just described. Okay. So we still have a box. That's the way I kind of think of the hypergeometric distribution of N objects. R of them successes, N minus R failures. Now, instead of shaking the box and randomly pulling out N objects one at a time, we're going to shake the box and then order them, you know, put them in a line and then just grab the first in observations. <clears throat> That's an equivalent situation to the hypergeometric distribution. Now, if we let xi equal 1 if object i is success and 0 otherwise, and this is for i equals 1 to n, so these are indicator variables for the first n ball. So x1 is a 0 or 1, depending upon its, whether it's success or not, all the way to xn is a 0 or 1. So if we add those up, that's the number of successes in a sample size n, and that's x. That's x is a hypergeometric distribution, <clears throat> and it's the sum of these uh, 0, 1 random variables. I almost said independent. They're not independent. So we're going to go through a couple theorems and then we'll prove or derive the mean and the variance. First theorem is that for i equals 1 to n, the probability that the ith observation or the ith ball or the object is a success is r over n. Remember, it's xi is a 1 if it's a success, it's a 0 otherwise. And that probability is r over n. And notice there's no index here. It doesn't matter what ball we talk about. All n balls, the probability of a success is r over n. This is, of course, before we look at them. So let's prove it. Now, I'm going to point you to a video called Vondermann's Identity in my playlist where I describe Vondermann's identity. And if actually, if you just search for Vondermann, two or three videos will pop up. And all of them deal with different aspects. And using Vondermann's Identity, I'd encourage you to to do that. But we want to find the probability that xi is 1. Now, if the ith observation of 1, what can happen before that? There can be no successes in the, the first i minus 1. There could be 1 or 2 all the way up to i minus 1 successes in the first i minus 1 observations. So we're going to condition on how many there are. So that's the sum of the xi from 1 to i minus 1, equaling some number of successes, right? And then, it, then it, we have, it's the conditional of that, the probability the xi is 1, given that this sum is j, right? The, this probability is the same as this one. Now, let's look at that. The probability that the first i minus 1 observations has j successes that's a hypergeometric distribution. So it's R choose J, N minus R choose, you know, this, divided by N choose I minus 1. That's just a standard hypergeometric distribution. Now, 
Here, the probability of the ith ball is a success, given that the previous i minus 1 balls have j successes. Well, we have to remove those j successes, so there's r minus 1 successes left in the box, divided by n minus, and we've already taken out i minus 1 of them, so this is the probability of success. Well, now we're going to reduce some of this. So this second combination just comes straight down. And this one, when you expand it and then multiply that in and take out an R, you get this one times R, R times that. And this combinations times this, you can be shown to be equal N times, and then this combination is N minus 1, choose I minus 1. Well, this piece here, is Vondemann's identity, and it sums to 1. So it is r minus n. So each of these have a probability of r divided by capital N. That's for all i. i equals 1 to n. Now the second theorem is this. For i and j from 1 to n, i strictly less than j, the probability that the i th observation is a 1 and the jth observation object is a 1 is equal to this probability. And notice there's no i or j in here. So this is for all i and j. It's a constant probability. So the prob this probability can be written in conditional form. Well, the probability that i-th observation is a 1, we just proved that as r over n. Now the probability that the jth observation is a 1, given that the i-th observation is a 1, that means we've removed one object from the box. So the probability of the jth observation to one is just, it's the same, but with one less observation. So it's r minus one divided by n minus one, and this is it. Now let's look at, let's drive the mean and the variance. Let x be a hypergeometric distribution or a hypergeometric random variable with parameters n, r, and n. The mean of x is given by n times r over n. And here's the proof. The expected value of x is equal to the expected value of this sum, which is the sum of the expected values. But the uh, expected value, remember the x is a 0, 1. So it's 0 times the probability of x is 0. So that's 0. Plus the probability of 1 times the probability that xi is equal to 1, which is r over n. We just proved that up there. We're adding that n times, so it's n times r over n, and that's what we wanted to show. Now, let x be a hypergeometric random variable with parameters n, r, and n. The variance of x is given by this expression, and let's prove it. So the variance of x is equal to the variance of the sum and since the observations are not independent, there's going to be a covariance between them. So the formula for that is the sum of the variances plus two times the double sum of the covariances. You know, i strictly less than j. So now let's start plugging in what we know. The variance of x is equal to the expected value of xi squared minus the mean quantity squared. And the covariance is equal, you know, everything else comes down. The covariance is the expected value of xi times xj minus the product of the means. Those are standard formulas. Now here, xi is a 0, 1 random variable. So 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. So the expected value of xi squared is actually the same as the expected value of xi, which we showed earlier was just r over n. And then the square to them, that mean is r squared over n squared. And notice there's no index. So we're adding it n times. So we get n times this sum. Okay. Here, the expected value of xi, xj, it, so these are 0, 1 random variables. So that product can only take on a value of 0 or 1. So it's 0 times the probability that this product is zero, but it's going to be zero, so we, let's ignore it. The prob so it's one times the probability that the both of these are one, which we set up a, a second ago was this product, r over n times r minus one over n minus one. And then the expected value of each of those is r over n, so it's r n squared. And notice there's no i or j in this, so we're adding it up this many times. Well, this many times is uh, combinations n choose 2. 
So you take 2 times n choose 2 times this quantity, and, you, and it simplifies to this. Well, if you take this subtraction, you get the result of the variance, which is what we wanted to show. All right, well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.